And um, we have another person who is uh, a good communicator and a, a faithful steward of the gifts God has given to him. And Jim Rook is going to come and offer a time of witness. And, and Jim, uh, in this service, I have learned there are no rules and no rights. Um, last week, Candace, uh, two weeks ago, Candace spoke from her seat. Uh, you can sit here or you can come forward and, and uh, put your uh, notes on the lectern. I will. As the Spirit moves you. Now, I gotta say, Chris, you don't have to worry, I'm not hanging for your job. <laughs> so, you're very good to know it. Um, well, thank you for all being here this morning and, and participating in this message that, that I want to provide. You know, the Bible is, is clear uh, from the very beginning to the very end that everything that we have is a gift from God. There's also an expectation that we're going to return part of that for his purposes. You see it in all the way from Genesis where God tells Abraham to go out uh, to another land. Uh, he'll be blessed and people will be blessed through him. This is the message. And then you see it later on. You'll see it in um, 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Chronicles, excuse me where David says that everything in the heavens and earth is yours, O Lord. So we see it over and over again, the source of everything, but also the expectation that we're going to use what we've been provided for God's purposes. Part of those purposes, of course, are mentioned in 1 Timothy where it says, if anyone does not provide for his own and also for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So not only are we supposed to take care of other people outside of our church families, but also our own families. So all that God has given us is designed to be used in all those ways. You know, I've, I have a career as a, as a financial planner, um, and so I'm used to talking to folks about their money. But I have to confess it's different in church. You know, financial decisions are intensely personal decisions. And to talk about them in public is kind of a different thing. Uh, people don't want to be heavy meddling in their personal financial decisions unless you're invited. You didn't invite me. This <laughs> <laughs> but you're get me. Anyway. If you have this expectation from God that he's provided everything, you can think about what he's done for us as, as providing us with a, a bushel of apples that we get to use as our annual income to pay the bills that we have, to take care of our needs, um, to uh, pay the power bills, pay the light bills, uh, pay for groceries, pay for auto, for insurance, pay for all those kind of things. But the expectation is that there will also be something left over from what he's given us to be returned to him. And that's the part that's difficult. And in my financial planning career, I see lots of people come into our offices, and we ask a lot of nosy questions. We don't just do money management. We have the expectation that if we're going to do the right kinds of things for them, they need to be sharing with us a lot of personal financial details. It's not comfortable for them in some cases, but they do it. That's why they've hired us. And I have a couple observations from that over the years. Um, one of them relating to us today is that too often, even though an awful large percentage of our clients are Christians, too large a percentage of those have no prayerful, thoughtful decision-making process for what they're going to get back. It ends up being just sort of a, a byproduct of all the other decisions that they make. And I can illustrate that. I brought in this apple this morning, and if I don't call out my fingers, uh, you'll see how this works. Uh, for those of you that went to the... Um, Adam Hamilton series last year. Uh, you've seen some of this kind of illustration before, so I, I apologize if I'm borrowing it from him. But what we do is we take the apples that, that God has given us, and we hopefully at the beginning of the year we have the idea that we're going to have an apple left over that will be God's apple that will return to him. However, what happens is, and you see this, you know, I'm kind of, my car's getting to be about eight or nine years old, ten years old. It would be nice to have a nicer looking car to uh, replace the one I've got sitting in my driveway. 
And so I looked at the, the apple that I intended to give back to God, and I said, well, God, I'm sorry about that, but uh, you know, I've got a little bit of need here. And so if I'm going to make car payments, part of your apple has to get taken away. Well, you know, when I get done with that, maybe if I turn the apple this way, God won't notice. <laughs> and I've been kind of nibbling on his apple. And also, for those of you that know me, uh, Sarah and I have this ongoing joke, I won't call it battle, but ongoing joke. My eyes are getting kind of old. And it's hard to watch football on an old TV screen. A new flat, high definition screen, TV screen would be kind of neat. And if I do that, you know, I can okay, go to Best Buy on the way home today. They'll be open when I leave today. Um, and if I negotiate a pretty good deal, um, yeah, I don't want too big of a bite out of God's apple. And again, if I hold it the right way, maybe God won't notice. And then there's other things. There are, I like to eat out. I love to eat. Um, I'm not so fancy about cooking, uh, but I do love to eat. So I, I try to go out to eat about two, three nights a week. To say wear a chair on her oven at home, you know, I don't want to say that. She's using that thing and wearing it out too fast. I may end up with a, um, a bigger stomach, but a smaller apple. So when I get to the end of the year, what we've given back to God has been kind of eroded a little bit. And that's unfortunate. Since it all came from, to, from him to begin with. But you get the idea. That's really not the way God intended for us to operate. But you know what's worse about all that? Is that every single one of those slices I took out of that apple was money that originally was going to come back to the church and all the church to do its work. So every time I took a little bite out of that apple, I wasn't just taking away God's money for myself. I was preventing the church. I was having less evangelism. I was having less children's programming. I was having less maintenance on the building and grounds. All those kinds of things that God might have wanted to do with that $100 bill that Chris just had here. He only got $90. Or he only got $80 because I chose to do the things that I chose to do. Now, none of those things individually were bad. And I don't mean that big. But the cumulative effect of all those took the $100 I was going to give back, made it $80 or $70 or $60, and it forced the church to make decisions we wouldn't necessarily have chosen to make if I had given the full apple back to God. You know, I want to make it clear that I think that illustration applies not just to the money we give, but our time and our talents too. You know, those came from God, and we owe those, owe those things back to Him also, not just the money. So all of those things, all of those um, time, talents, and treasure that God gave to us, we owe Him back a share of those. We need to keep that in mind in all that we do. So let me close with a couple comments. Chris has already made one. Uh, one of those is that we've simplified the... Um, process of doing estimate of giving cards this year. It used to be that we had four lines in there. We had one for general budget. We had one for building fund. We had one for um, um, extra mile. Then we had another category. All that's changed this year. We're just asking for you to give us one estimate. One estimate of what you want to return to God. A second thing I encourage you to do is read Homer Bouchard's note that he put in the uh, September um, uh, newsletter. Uh, in that newsletter, he says, uh, he reminds us that we created the Bridge to the Future campaign three years ago with the intention that this would bridge us to a time when the, the Family Life Center was paid off, which will happen before the end of this year or early next year. And the $60,000 that we were spending on this Family Life Center every year were no longer necessary. And that's a wonderful thing. If people who are giving money toward the Family Life Center continue that giving after the Family Life Center is paid off, if all that $60,000 disappears, then we have not done what we would hope to see done in terms of continuing to build on St. James, 
uh, building on our services, building on our evangelism, building on our missions work, building on our maintenance and grounds improvements, all those kind of things. So we need, we need to see that give and continue. Uh, we hope that you'll be very careful about the decisions as you make it. I hope that uh, Steve Brockman a couple of years ago created this expression called St. James Moments. Uh, we all hope that this year's uh, stewardship campaign will be another of those uh, St. James moments. And we can report that the uh, stewardship committee can report when we're all done that give, giving didn't fall by $60,000 when the uh, Penn Life Center debt was paid off. And I want to close with a, a reminder that um, I read this a while back and I thought it would fit very well this morning. St. Ignatius of Loyola, the part of the Jesuits, wrote this 500 years ago. He said, Pray as if it all depends upon God, for it does. But work, and I might add give, as if it all depends upon us, for it does. So my prayer this morning will be that each of us will increasingly resolve to use our time, talent, and resources for God's good. I thank you. Amen.